no, they haven't advocated fear to increase people's COVID protective behaviours. Instead, they recognise two things. Firstly, it is helpful to ensure people have a realistic level of concern about the risks that they and others face, and also that they are enabled to know what to do and how to reduce those risks. Secondly, this means providing clear information about what works to reduce risks alongside information and messages to promote an acceptable level of concern. What would be the problems with trying to manage COVID by frightening people? There are two main problems with increasing fear as a strategy. It is not ethical to create distress unless there's a very good reason for doing so. And evidence shows that it's generally an ineffective method for enabling behaviour change, as distress with no associated action to reduce it can lead to what is called defensive processing. This means that people distance themselves from unpleasant emotion using several techniques. For example, minimising the threat in their minds, it's not a big deal, or convincing themselves that the threat doesn't apply to them. For example, I'm young and healthy, so I'm not at all at risk. Or discredit the person giving the information. For example, they don't know what they're talking about. What does the evidence show? The evidence shows that for those who don't think there is a risk when there is a risk, the certain kinds of communication that are helpful. Trusted people should give clear, straightforward messages about risk in ways that are easy to understand. And this needs to be alongside informing people about how to take action to reduce risks to themselves and others. The messages should be very specific about who should do what, where and when, and ensure that people have the opportunity to do these things so that protecting themselves is easy, not difficult.